Hi, Clutter Fairy fans. Welcome to the Clutter Fairy Weekly for March 23rd, 2021. I'm your co-host, Ed Gumnick, and I'm speaking with Gail Goddard, professional organizer and owner of the Clutter Fairy in Houston, Texas. Hi, everybody. The Clutter Fairy Weekly is our weekly webcast and podcast where we talk about all things organizing. And we are going to talk about um, an organizing topic today that Ed actually suggested. But we use all of your commentary on our social media for topic solutions. So thank you for that. And we appreciate you participate in this podcast so diligently. Well, and I suggested the topic, but it was based on homework from a few weeks ago that was okay. suggested by someone else's topic so it all fits together. <laughs> right? in a very convoluted way it's all it's all on y'all thank you if, <laughs> if you're joining us in the zoom meeting for the first time you can share your comments and questions via the chat and i'll try to make sure gail gets to them before we move on you can also use the raise hand feature to let us know that you'd like to ask a question or make a comment yourself via audio or video. And we are streaming the webcast live on Facebook. So you can also share your questions and comments there and I'll relay them to Gail. And during the live webcast every week, you can talk to us by phone by calling 669-900-6833. Use meeting ID 993-419-863 and password clutter to join the meeting. Okay, so last week's tittle was when the going gets tough, the tough declutter shopping. <laughs> and what we suggested was that you return something that you've been needing to take back to the store, that you unpack a shopping bag that's been sitting around being ignored, that you make a shopping list or spending plan in preparation for retail therapy outing, as we called it. Right. Or that you look for a purchase in your house that you regret and figure out how to get it out of your space by donation, by giving it to a friend, by throwing it in the recycling bin, et cetera. And this is exactly what you did, right? You yeah. So I, yeah, I actually did this homework my, myself this week. And the story about that is we went to, there's a nice little Asian grocery store near a place where we pick up carry out once or twice a week and we popped in there the other day and I all I needed was a jar of sambal which Jaime eats a lot of and this grocery has a ten dollar limit on credit card purchases and the jar of sambal is about you know two and a half bucks or something so rather than buy a lifetime supply of sambal I ran around <laughs> and found a few more things that I could imagine using but didn't especially need right away. I got some spring roll wrappers and some uh, rice wine vinegar, you said. Rice wine vinegar and a jar, a great big jar of bamboo shoots. Came up with my $10, took it home, put it on the dining room table, and proceeded to ignore it for and about walked three walked away. For about three <laughs> days. You know, I took the sambal out because Jaime was ready to eat it. And, um, and so I saw it the other day and I thought, look at that i can do the homework i can do the weekly tittle <laughs> this week and so i dug into those bags and figured out where to put those things they just ha had to be tucked away in the pantry you know right. it, was, it, was, it wasn't it, complicated but there it sat yeah i thought it was fascinating as you were he was telling me the story that he said yeah and then i put it on the dining table and i walked away and i was like Oh my God, there it is right there. Like the part that you cared about was the part that you extracted from the bag and the rest was just you filling in. And so you basically put it on the table and ignored it because you didn't need it right away. And then it was just sitting out as a grocery bag in the middle of everything, right? And so it was a brilliant, it was a brilliant example of you buy what you don't need and then you come home and you don't deal with what you got. I'm sure that people who have been listening to us for a while could hear me tell the story and immediately go, oh, and here's where you, here's where everything started to go wrong. He set it <laughs> down on the dining room table. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, that's the trick, right? That's where like, it went off the rails. And promptly, you know, the bag came out of your hand and you promptly forgot about it. Like it just disappeared for you mentally. And it's part of the process that it has, the objects have to come in and unpack. And that the things that you bought were jars that weren't, it wasn't like it was meat or vegetables that were going to rot in the bag. 
So yeah. your incentive to deal with it immediately was zero. Right, no other, urgency. Other than you had it sitting on the dining room table. And so I think it's, we sort of consciously, or I mean, unconsciously see it as a problem that doesn't have to be dealt with now. So then I can come in and ignore it. <clears throat> but my version do, of, go a ahead. Dozen, a few dozen of those. Right. And then you have bags everywhere, right? Yeah. My version of that is that um, I come in and usually by the time that I wrestle all the stuff out of my car into the house and I come home from being out running around or working or whatever, the first thing I want to do is sit down. It's like, oh God, I just need to sit down. And so there's a step between either you make yourself keep going, even though you desperately want to sit down and you finish the job in the house or you make a deal with yourself that you're going to sit down, but you're only allowed to sit down for 10 minutes. Right. And then you have to get up and go finish the job. And then you can settle in for the night. Then you can, you know, do what you're going to do about food or sit down and, you know, give your hour of reading the book or whatever you're going to do for your own entertainment. But hanging on to the project beyond walking across the threshold with the bags. <laughs> It's, I mean, you should treat all of your purchases like they're groceries that are going to expire or die or rot. And it, it, if you think of them as meat, like if you had meat in a grocery bag, you would go in and put it away until you were, you know, even if you were tired, you would still put the meat up, right? Because you know, it's going to get lost in a, an hour or two, you're not going to be able to use it anymore. So it's something that you want to deal with right away. And if you think of all of your purchases like that, think of them all as meat. <laughs> it creates that sort of fake urgency that you need to go put it away. And if this isn't a problem for you, awesome. But if it is, it's something to keep in mind. Um, it creates clutter instantly. The minute you sit a bag down somewhere where it doesn't need to go full of stuff that you don't remember that you bought you've immediately created a bag of clutter and deposited it in the middle of your house. And so maybe you can come up with a um, creative solution for solving that problem. <laughs> well, it, it occurs to me too that, that I'm just going to let myself sit down for 10 minutes mm -hmm. can be a little bit of a trap. Mm -hmm. be, especially if the sitting down involves picking up your phone, Pulling picking up your computer, turning on the television, turning on the TV. Yeah, yeah any of which can suck away hours before you <laughs> suddenly you realize, Oh, I'm still sitting here and it got dark and it's the, now in the middle it's of the dinner night. time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Linda said, I completed a few things that I had put off for about nine months for the total. Ooh. So cheers to Linda. Good job, Linda. That's always feels like, thank God that's finally off the list. Good job. And she says, couldn't have done it without Gail. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you did it. Congrats. Connie said, I found a three pack of undies. I never returned or exchanged. They will be donated. Excellent. Good solution. And she, had, she had bought the wrong size by mistake. And oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, then, too, you know, fresh undies can help somebody else. That's a kind thing to do with them. And Anya said, I did two return packages. Hey. She qualified that with not much, but I say that's two more than, than none at all. Well, and Good let me job. just tell you that people pay me to return packages for them. They pay my rate, my professional rate, because they cannot be bothered or cannot face returning stuff. And so if you did it and it didn't cost you any money, you didn't have to pay anybody to do it, rock on, sister, you win. <laughs> I think that's the ultimate win right there. And April reports, mm -hmm. I mailed a box for donation to Arts and Scraps. It's like Art Asylum, but in Michigan. Oh, cool. Ooh, I'll have to look that one up, Arts and Scraps. Let me write that down. And Lise said, I did a return and shipped out a package uh, to mom that has been sitting. Yay. Oh, that's great. Stacy said, found some back, uh, back to school clothes while decluttering that I got this summer stuff shifted a few times during during the home doing the homework now and going to get them in the hamper to wash today yay good job just in time to go back to school that's wonderful you found it in perfect timing then that's excellent okay so let's get on to our main topic for today and that is all tied up in knots creative clutter problem solving 
And I first thought about calling this walking the walk because someone used that phrase in a comment recently talking about Gail and Ed doing, right? doing their own version of the homework and reporting on progress. And we both, let, to, to refresh everyone's memory, last week we both had to report that we had mostly failed to do the homework <laughs> from two weeks ago. The, yeah. the homework from two weeks ago was about something that's been nagging at you a while, some, something that has been stuck on your list, and you're going to mend your coat. Yes, I was going to mend my coat, and it had to wait until I finish my project. So this is where I'm going to attempt to share the screen and show you my project there. So that is what was preventing me from fixing my coat. And so it did get fit completed and mailed off on the deadline last Friday, which was super exciting for me. And I am so thrilled that it's going to the Museum of Beadwork in Portland, Maine. And apparently there's um, about 500 entries of people that have mailed these six by six inch squares. And so I can't wait to see what they, how they get all those 500 on the wall somewhere in the museum. They're going to make an exhibit out of them all. And it wow. will be, mine will be in with all these millions of others that get put up on the wall. So I'm super excited. That's cool. So this was step one was to complete, <laughs> this had to be completed by the deadline, which it got done. And then I was able to go back and, um, fix the uh, tear in my coat, which is a good thing to get done at the end of winter. So now I am caught up to complete. And um, I'm going to stop my share now. Okay, so that brings me to my report. And so my thing was, I've been grocery shopping for my, my parents since early in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And sometime around November, I quit going sto in stores because the numbers in our area were completely off the charts. The, the infection rate and new cases were just, just completely out of control here. And so I started doing everything online. So I want to tell a little story be before I tell my story. And that is about the Gordian Knot. Now I know a lot of Clutter Fairy fans are extremely well-read and literate and <laughs> probably know the story, but just for anyone who hasn't heard it, um, according to Greek, myth Greek mythology, when the peasant Gordius became king of Gordium in Phrygia, he dedicated his wagon to the god Jupiter and fastened his yoke to a beam with a very complicated knot. Several centuries later, Alexander the Great arrived on the scene and he was told that he wouldn't be able to conquer and rule Asia unless he proved himself worthy by untying the Gordian knot. Alexander quickly solved the problem and gained a new kingdom by slicing the knot in half with his sword. And ever since then, Gordian knot has become a synonym for a difficult problem. Gordian knot has become a popular way to describe a neat solution for an apparently insurmountable, insurmountable difficulty. So my Gordian knot was the the issue of my dad's grocery tally i had i don't know 15 or 20 instacart orders and a wallet full of receipts and every time i sat down to do it i felt defeated it was so complicated mm -hmm. and i kept promising dad that i would finish the the accounting and give him a figure so that he could so i could write myself a check and and deposit it and, and he was point, worried about it. Like he, it, it was bothering him that yeah, it was, he, he it was, didn't know what the amount was. It was bothering him and it was bothering me. And he, at one point, a few weeks ago, he even offered to just let me pick a number from thin air and call it even. But I, you know, I wanted to, I wanted it to be fair. And I was kind of stuck on that. It needed to be fair. And I didn't want to cheat him. And I didn't want to cheat myself. So I sat down last week or last weekend for the third time to, to start going through the Instacart receipts. And I realized just how complicated the project was. And, you know, there are things that I buy for us and also for them. And when I stopped going to the stores to shop, 
I stopped having written lists because I would just call, you know, when I, with the Instacart orders, I would just call dad and say, what do you need? And I would add it to my Instacart shopping as I, as he told me. So I finally decided I should just take dad up on his offer. And I called him to talk about a settlement and I, I read, ran through a bunch of the receipts and tallied, you know, just did a quick tally on the totals. And once we got, you know, somewhere into the low 12 or 1300s, he said, why don't we just make it $500? And then he changed it to 550. And that seemed fair to him. And for myself, I kind of decided time is money. So it makes more sense for me to just accept his figure, even if it's lower than what I actually spent, just to get the project off my plate. And, so, to, and bring him some relief. And, and it was a perfect slice through the knot. Yeah, so I wrote myself the check and deposited in my <laughs> checking account, took a picture of it to send to him so he can write it in his register and have every, we can both stop worrying about it start fresh and in the starting fresh what we're going to do is i applied for an additional credit card and added my sister as an authorized user and i'm going to send the bills to dad and yeah. we'll just use this card to when dad needs something to accumulate all of his expenses yeah and then no one has to keep track no one has to <laughs> There will be no more Excel spreadsheets. And your dad can pay the bill directly. Yes, exactly. So he knows what it is. He can see the detail, what you guys are spending. It's a brilliant solution. Truly. So that's my, that's how I walked the walk. And it's a little, un, you know, it's, it's unconventional, like taking, a, taking your sword to the knot. It was not what I set out to do. <clears throat> because I had a bunch of, you know, I had a, I had an idea of what the project would entail and what the steps would be. And I was sort of locked into that. And, and so, you are a detail guy and you, your first solution to everything is to make a spreadsheet and start, you know, knacking around out all the details, right? Right. right. Gather all the data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it became, the, the scope of the tallying became a project that was too large for all the time it was going to take up from your regular life, from you doing your client work and whatever to solve that problem, right? Like this, the typical solution was itself becoming an impediment. Right. So that's why I suggested this for today's topic. Yeah. So uh, what can you talk? So talk to us. <laughs> What's your analysis? There's, yeah. There's so much to unpack in Ed's story here about <clears throat> that we decided to make creative problem solving the topic today. A lot of what I do with clients is troubleshoot issues and look for actionable solutions to solve the problem. Clients look to me for a plan, sometimes any plan just to get in motion. Often my job is to cut through the tangled knot that is their emotional response to the problem and find a practical solution that can be executed right away. So let's talk today about how you can do the same thing and hopefully slice through your own Gordian knot. This is where my first example is based on um, Ed and how he came up with a completely alternative solution. Being attached to a specific process sometimes prevents more practical solutions and his image in his mind of making a spreadsheet and doing all the detailed work of every item on the receipt to come up with a number was a project that became something that was insurmountable it became too big for him he didn't have the time to spend he had too much it was too much detail to figure out he couldn't decide whether the bananas were his bananas or his dad's bananas <laughs> it was too much trouble so um what he did was think outside the box for a solution other than the one that he had planned, which is to do the project as you're currently conceiving it. And he was conceiving this spreadsheet and, and, and nailing down all the very specific expenditures 
in an attempt to be fair to himself and to his dad. But ultimately, when he looked at it, that process was too cumbersome for him. And the solution, the better solution was uh, more practical, which is, okay, dad, here's a, here's a test sample of a month. And this is where we end up. And are you, so dad said, if I know this much data, then I can extrapolate that $500 is fine with me. And they just sliced right through all the work and said, based on the evidence and, you know, and the truth is it's Ed and his dad, like he doesn't, he doesn't, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. His dad doesn't want to feel like a burden to Ed. Ed doesn't want to feel like that, you know, he's, he wants to be supporting his dad. And so if it swings, if it's not a perfect representation of exactly the split of the expenses, he's still letting his dad pay for groceries and he, whatever, um, inexactness there is in the number that they picked Ed is like fine I'm taking care of my dad whatever it doesn't matter so <clears throat> yeah and <clears throat> um let's see Pat said doing it perf perfectly complicated is the enemy of good enough mm -hmm. and and that's it's such a great point and I think part of the fixation on process in this case was it's a money thing mm -hmm. and, and it's a money thing and it's a fairness thing. You know, you want to be fair, but of course, when it's two people who have a relationship that includes a high degree of trust, fair is whatever you both agree is fair. <laughs> exactly. And you guys love each other and you know, you're just trying to be helpful and he is trying to acknowledge that you're being helpful and everybody's trying to be loving and kind to each other. And so as long as you're happy with the end result and, and you can surrender the work and then, you know, I don't want to um, miss acknowledging your second stage of the solution. So you address the backlog with, okay, five fifty 550 whoosh right? And that got you to the backlog. But then you came right. up with a, how do we avoid this in the future situation? And it was to get a credit card that you can use on his behalf that he can pay. And then everything that you do for him will go on a card. So you're just the labor now and he's going to get a bill and he's going to get the stuff, but he doesn't have to go get it. Right. And so you are the ex executor of the errand that he is no longer able to do and he can pay for it and so you've come up with a perfect no think no record keeping solution that makes it perfectly clear what you're doing on his behalf and he you know if he has issue with it when he gets the bill he can call you and ask you what's going on and that's too much and let's try something else like y'all can you know tweak as you go but what a brilliant solution going forward that require that allows you or Beth to solve your dad's problems, which is supply him with stuff that he needs and he doesn't have to deal with it. <laughs> he can just say, I need this and yeah. you can go get it or Beth can go get it. And you guys can use this card and, the, and he is going to pay for it. And it's, it's just brilliant. And so it surrender, you surrendered your need to make a spreadsheet and you came up with, super creative, very shortcut and very relieving, you know, like this is a relief for you and for him and for Beth, like you get, you guys all have a solution that works for everybody and bravo, bravo, bravo. Well, and, and Marcy says it can also be called letting go. Cause that's, that's, and that's true. It's, that's a big part of what had exactly, to happen here. I had exactly. to let go, let go of the sense of control, let go of the sense of accuracy the, you know, the concern about accuracy. Yeah. And, and Deborah says, that reminds me of the idea of throwing, throwing money at the problem. Sometimes, even though I am enormously cheap, <clears throat> frugal, sometimes <laughs> throwing money at a problem solves it on the spot. And that's, mm -hmm. there is, there's an element of that here because he might've owed me $700. He might've owed me $300. I don't know. Right. And so one of us threw money. We don't know which one, but one of us threw money at the problem. Unless we have to just nail it, you know, right on the head. Right. <laughs> and it worked, right? Like you threw money at the problem, whoever, and you and everybody walked away happy. Yeah, Nobody has regret. And a thing that has been on my to-do list for 
a month and a half. Is. And nagging the hell out of you, yeah. right? Like really making you feel bad is now a relief and you feel fine and he feels fine and everybody's emotions around it are now happy and pleasant. And yeah. isn't that where you're aiming for all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant. So um, this, um, the next suggestion I have here is if you are facing your own Gordian knot, try imagining the problem as if it's your friend that's struggling with the problem. What would you tell them about it? What would you suggest that they do? Any solution that presents itself for your friend can be applied to yourself. A lot of times um, people say to me, I don't have any problem organizing my friend's stuff. I just can't organize my own. Okay, so pretend like your stuff is your friends. And what would you, what advice would you give? What solution to the problem would you use? How would you tackle it? There's something to be said for getting out of your own way and pretending like it's somebody else's problem and fixing it that way. If you can give yourself a solution by taking an emotional step back from it, sometimes you can find a problem, a solution to the problem. When clients start telling me all the ways that this situation is a problem, often I just say to them, today we're focused on solutions. I understand all the ways that this is a problem, but that's not what's important today. Today we're looking for solutions to handle it. So what if we, and I start spitballing, fill in the blank, what if we try this? What if we try this? What if we try this? Sometimes the biggest hurdle is your own focus on the problem instead of focusing on possible solutions. It doesn't cost anything to speculate about what might work. We often get trapped by our own emotions about how this problem makes us feel. If we feel scared or overwhelmed or out of our depth, we shut down from the negative emotional response. That makes problem solving impossible. If I personally feel like I don't know what to do about something, my solution can be as simple as discussing it with someone else with the intent to gather ideas from someone with more expertise than myself. Um, <clears throat> we currently have a cat that has a, a health issue and we're trying to find solutions about it. And Penny and I keep having conversations around it. <laughs> And yesterday she went to the store and looked for some specific, specific food. And she did some Googling about some holistic vets. And she, you know, she went out and did some, uh, she started doing some research because what we typically have been doing isn't working and we're having to spitball some new choices. And so she went out and started looking for some and we don't have the solution yet, but we have, taken some steps and we have some things to investigate and we have some people to call. And so, you know, I feel better about it already just because we've made some movement towards a solution and our own emotions get in the way of our ability to problem solve. And when I'm sitting with clients and they're telling me how this problem is weighing them down and, and these are all the reasons why this is a problem. And this is how complex this problem is. And this is how, knotted up this how much of a Gordian knot this problem is and they show it to me in all its colors and permutations and Ed's version of this would be to be describing all the trouble he was having with the spreadsheet and with analyzing the receipts and how much time it's taking and uh, you know he had all of these things that were a problem and then he was like yeah whoosh, let's skip all that and go straight to a solution well and I didn't even <clears> mention <throat> you know Instacart complicates it further. Although I have, I pay the subscription. Yeah. So the delivery is free. There's also, I think there's a little service fee, whatever that is. Yeah. And there's then there's the cost. tip. Then there's the tip. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I tip, I tip generously because people are doing my shopping for me so that I don't get exposed to a disease, you know, right, and right, so I, right. I'm generous with them because I feel certain they're not paid what their work, what their work is worth, you know, or for the risk they're taking. And so I have to decide how much of that do I want to pass, you know, how much of that do I pass along to dad? Cause it's. Yeah. Cause you guys didn't agree on that. Right. And um, so that's more, you know, that complicates the whole thing more. And, and really, 
if you were tr- that was all flavors of how to be exactly fair about the number right yeah. that was all problems that you encountered in trying to share the cost split the cost equitably make it be um, appropriate that you didn't charge him for your groceries and vice versa and la 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 and all those things all that complication all the beautiful description of the knot um, did nothing towards solving the problem. And I hear this a lot when I go to people's spaces, they're sort of stuck in, these are all the reasons why this is a problem. It's like, okay, but let's not focus on the, all the many shades of the problem. Let's focus on what will solve the problem. And often it's just that rotation of perspective that allows you to see it differently, but it, you do have to notice that you're stuck in the spiraling perception of how this problem is so onerous and difficult. Well, and I think you made a really important point, which is the, the distinction between the problem and our intellectual slash emotional slash dispositional perspective on the problem you know, there's there's the pro- the real problem, and then there's our complicated baggage laden analysis of the problem. <laughs> right, a big one that comes up for uh, a lot of my clients is um, I have female clients, women clients, and home repair problems where you have to get some guy to come in, some repairman to come in and fix it. And you never know if if what they're telling you is the truth and you don't understand the problem well enough to tell whether they're, uh, you know, blowing smoke up you. And, you know, it's, it is a, it is something that stymies women a lot. The idea that I don't know whether this guy is doing right by me or not. And so often those home repairs get, that, you know, I have a plumbing, I have a plumbing problem gets ignored while they worry about the fact that they don't feel expert enough to know whether the plumber's doing a good job or not. It's like, yeah, well, that's your emotion about the problem, not the problem. In the meantime, your toilet's leaking and you got to right. solve that problem, that's a, right? That's and a so- fantastic, that's a fantastic example because <laughs> There's the problem, which is water flowing across the floor. Right, That's, where you do not want it. <laughs> at its root, that is the whole problem. But then it's complicated by, am I being cheated? Am I being treated fairly? Do I know the right guy to call? Is this guy honest? And do I feel safe letting him in my home? Yes, yes, yes. All of those How things. How am I going to, am I going to, is the landlord going to believe me when I say this was the best guy for the job? Yeah, you know, 100%. And so I had that problem with the when the water was leaking and we managed to turn it off during the cold snap and we had water leaking in the garage and yada yada and the landlord had the same problems. He had no electricity and no water and a bunch of leaks too. And so he was sort of like, yeah, we'll get to you when we get to you cuz we got these we are we got our own problems going on over here. And I was like, yeah, so that ain't going to work for me because I am don't have any water. So <laughs> I threw my own money at that problem and I called one guy and he came and said, this job is too complicated for me. I can't do it. And then we got a referral to another person and I basically got a plumber in there and paid them in front of the money to pay them and dealt with the landlord on the back end because there was no way I was waiting until his plumbing problem was solved to solve my problem. Four days without a toilet was long enough. I'm just telling you, there was no waiting. And so I threw money at the problem. Yes, I'm supposed to do a whole bunch of other things in a different order because I don't own the house, but no. I threw money and solved my plumbing problem. And then all the rest was conversation for me and the landlord to have after the fact, which we did. And he reimbursed me for the plumber. And, and I took a problem off his plate basically because he didn't have to come and fix my plumbing too. So it worked, it sliced through it. And I got my toilet back, which was the most important thing. Yay. (laughs) Yay. Right. Indoor plumbing. You gotta love it. (laughs) You gotta love it. (laughs) Okay, so here's another suggestion. Um, If you are stymied by the project and you cannot figure out what to do and you cannot conceive of the whole project solution, you can bite off a smaller piece of the project. 
break off a portion of the project and work on just solving that. So I have a client who has so much going on, you cannot even believe. So her project is really, she came at the beginning of the pandemic because her mother was ill. She and her husband and her daughter came down from up in the Northeast somewhere. They stayed with her. The mother died within a few weeks of her being there. So now she's in Houston. Nobody can travel. Her mother has died. They're living in her mother's house. Everybody's working from home. They decide to build a home in Houston. So she has to deal with her mother's estate, deal with the house that's being built, figure out about moving from the Northeast, like moving where they were living to here. And all of those projects are going on like in her mind, they're all circling around, circling around, circling around. And I ended up making a Gantt chart for her that has eight distinct projects about sorting stuff and moving and moving this household and going back to Boston and going, you know, like it's just this constant, it's this big long list of things to do. And she can't address, although she's thinking about all of them simultaneously, she can't address them all at once. And so the first one that we're going to do is we're here, I'm here, she's here. We're going to sort and pull the things out of her mother's house that she wants to keep. So we're focused on doing that. And that is a part of the project that can move forward, even if she can't solve all the other seven things on her list. We can't do anything with the rest of those right now, but we can work on this sorting. And so that's how we're giving her a sense of moving forward and um, working on the project is that she's working on a piece of the project and moving it forward. And that if you're stuck about the whole thing, you can do a little piece, right? It's, this, it's, it's the project equivalent of you can't face the whole box, but you can take a hunk of the stuff out of the box and walk away and go sort it somewhere else. You're doing that at a project level about the whole project and solving yeah. that problem. I wanted to share a couple comments before we move on. Okay. Connie said, re, regarding time is money, I learned decades ago to almost always make double food, freeze half for days where making dinner was just too much effort saves money too right that's one i do a lot i often find myself getting ready to do something and it's like you know this would keep just fine i i why why would i make one when i could make four you know and put half of it away um and what a great way to stay on you know to support an eating plan or to stay on you know eating at home instead of eating out or budget controlling or all of that portion stuff. and portion control portion yeah. control too yeah Anya says, I still have something an ex-boyfriend made for me, real good, finely and beautifully done craft, which I've wanted to give away for at least a year. I feel the need to honor his work at the same time. And several people gave f feedback. It's, it, Anya said, it's a small item about the size of a hand and people suggested share, um, putting it on Facebook with friends and asking if someone would like it i you know what i was, i had a similar thing you remember i'm sure i do yeah yeah uh cross stitched piece that a friend had made for me and i was going to put it in a garage sale but then a friend saw it in the garage sale box while she was at the house and said "Ooh, i love that i said it's yours take it away <laughs> <laughs> and then people had a lot of good suggestions like um a buy nothing group there are groups where you can you know you get to decide where it goes based on the feedback that interested people give you they can't just say i'm interested they have to tell you why they want it so that you can judge you know who you want to give it to you could also donate it to um a, a nonprofit that's having some kind of a silent auction or a charity event where they're going to fundraise, particularly if it's a piece of art, then you can offer it up for somebody to auction it to for their own um, to raise money for them set for their organization. Pat made the same suggestion. Mm. Great minds. Good. Connie said, I also struggle with trying to find the right person for things that have value and I'm, I'm unsure to sell. And Anya said, thinking about thinking I might give it to a child to play with. Oh, you can do that too. Yeah, whatever works. It, See, you're problem solving. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Right? So um, the, the last 
suggestion here I'm going to make about this idea is don't let the problem intimidate you. The best advice I can give is that there's a solution to every problem and you're on a discovery mission to winkle it out. You may have constraints based on money or time or physical capacity, but there are solutions even within those constraints. You just have to be willing to get creative about hunting down a solution. If you are feeling intimidated, you just have to recognize that that's your own emotional response to the problem. It's not that the problem doesn't have a solution. It's that you feel intimidated by finding the solution or executing the solution. And so just keep looking. <laughs> there is a solution. And it, sometimes the solution is to ask other people for advice too. Like when I'm having these conversations with clients, it's because their solution was to hire an organizer to come and help them because they couldn't figure out the solution themselves. And hiring me is a solution that in, that's the throw money in it version of the solution. Let somebody that knows what they're doing, come in and make suggestions. And if that gets you past the problem, awesome. If the solution is out there and I have been that person and been intimidated by the problem, I totally get it. We all have the mountains that we're afraid to climb and just keep reminding yourself. That's just my own personal emotion about this. It isn't that there isn't actually a solution to the problem. It's just that I am being shut down by my own emotional response to having to deal with it. And so there's got to be a solution that doesn't shut you down and you just have to be, you know, hunting for it until you find the one that allows you to move forward. Like Ed and his dad did. They both wanted to solve this problem and their first pass didn't work for anybody, but they came up with what I think is a brilliant solution that allowed them to walk away comfortable and be happy and relieved. And so that's what you're aiming for. Good luck. <laughs> and before we get completely off of that, um, off that topic, Marcy said, "Can Ed, can you just try communicating with your dad about how much, if anything, he'd like to give the shoppers instead of just assuming? And that's a, that's a good point. And, and of course, I started doing what I was doing at the moment I needed, you know, like the first time I needed to buy stuff for him via Instacart, I just said, here's what I'm doing. And then just let it keep going that way. Yeah. And even though it complicated and even though it exacerbated the whole fairness issue. So that probably needs to go on the list is, you know, if there's, if there's someone else who is a stakeholder in the thing that is choking you up, the, the thing you're stuck on, have, an, have a good, honest conversation about it. Right. And I know your dad is a generous person and he will not oh, yeah. have any problem going, yeah, I'm happy with your solution or I would rather that it was more or less and you can just um, adjust to comply with what makes him comfortable yeah. because he's going to be the one paying the bills. Right. And so if you guys have that conversation, then again, everybody walks away happy because you're doing what you agree on. Well, and we're very, we're getting very close to second shots. We're going to be, we're going to get our second vaccinations March 29th, I Woo hope. And, Yay. Uh, and so, you know, when a suitable amount of time has passed after that, I will resume shopping in grocery stores. Going I did actually, to the store. I did actually go in a grocery store the other day because Instacart was telling me the next time they could, we were at my sister's house on the deck and we wanted beer and Instacart was telling me sometime tomorrow was the soonest they could bring me beer. And I said, like, I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> that is just not going to We're it. drinking right now right? on the porch. <laughs> Since we're about to run out of beer, I don't think sometime tomorrow will work. Okay, a couple quick announcements. Okay, and then we have to do a tittle. Yes, exactly. Um, I want to remind those who are watching us live on in Zoom or Facebook that we have a YouTube channel with more than 150 videos on lots and lots of organizing topics. Go to cfhou.com slash YouTube. While you're there, subscribe to the channel on YouTube and click the bell icon next to the subscribe button if you'd like to get notifications when we post new content. Okay, tell us about this week's tittle. Okay, so we want you to 
slice through your knot. So we're going to slice through the knot this week. What project or task is your Gordian knot in your legendary decluttering life? <laughs> this is this week. We'd like you to take a big slice at finding a new and creative solution to your hardest puzzle. So first identify a decluttering item on your to-do list that you find challenging in its size, scope, or complexity. Try to see the project from a new perspective. For example, how would you handle this project if money were no object or if you had had to absolutely finish it today? What would you tell your friend to do in this situation? Try a solution, any solution, see if it works. What have you got to lose? Come at this process from a, I'm not going to sit in the problem today. I am just going to look for solutions and see if you can come up with something. And let me add one more. Okay. This is, because this is this is sort of a, we're giving people sort of a grab bag of, of approaches to try. Right. And I think another one would be sit down with a piece of paper and a pencil and write down what the problem is and then try and write down what the emotional components of your understanding of the problem are. What see feelings you, are you feeling about it when you yeah. contemplate and face this problem? See if you can isolate those from one another and make the problem clearer so that the solution gets a little clearer. Right. And you can sort of go, okay, I acknowledge and how I deal with my emotions is a different problem than the actual problem I'm trying to solve. Yeah. I have water coming into my bathroom. <laughs> I need to and make I the need water stop that. flowing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so aside from my panic and stress and fear, what can I do to solve that water problem? And, and it's a good metaphor for, you know, you just have to suck it up and come up with something when there's water rolling across your floor, you just can't stand there and cry. So take that approach to your problem this week. Pick one. We know everybody has more than one. Just pick one that you found particularly confounding and see what you can do with it. See if you can slice through it and then come back next week and tell us all the brilliant solutions you came up with about how you solve your problem. We can't wait to hear. Okay. We are meeting as usual next Tuesday, March 30th at noon U.S. Central Time. And I am happy to report that the rest of the world will have joined the U.S. on daylight Oh, then we'll time. be back in sync. <laughs> so we will be back in sync to the usual time. That's awesome. And we apologize again that the United States has to be out of step with everyone else. Uh, yeah. If you're watching this on YouTube, we would love for you to join us live. To get notifications about upcoming events, we invite you to join the meetup group by visiting cfhou.com slash meetup. You can also follow us on Facebook by going to cfhou.com slash Facebook or subscribe to our mailing list by visiting cfhou.com slash subscribe. We love to hear from you, so please send us your questions, comments, and topic suggestions in the YouTube comments on Facebook or anywhere else that you find us. And you can always reach us through our website at clutterfairhouston.com. Thanks, you guys, for joining this week. We hope that you can face a Gordian knot and come out with a great solution you can tell us all about next week. We look forward to it. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.